it. I said, Lord, I put us before you. And we say, have thine own way. For you are the potter and we are the clay. Lord, we just thank you. And we just bless your name for this evening. And for everything that will be undertaken this evening, mighty God. Let your glory be seen. Let you alone and you alone be seen. And we just give you praise. We give you glory. We give you adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good evening, everyone. For all of those who are joining us on YouTube and Facebook, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us tonight for Glory Meeting and Bible Study. The success of what we do here is solely, solely, solely because of you. The fact that you join us week after week, day after day, morning, we don't take it lightly. And so we just want to give God thanks. We just want to praise God. We just want to bless God for every single one of you. Well, tonight we move straight into glory meeting and we're going to be calling on some persons to pray. And I'm going to ask Sister Carlene. Sister Carlene, I'm going to ask you to open your mic for me, woman of God. And I'm going to be asking you to pray for quite a number of upcoming events that we will be having as the Lighthouse Ministry. Uh, we have City of Praise coming up on April 28th, and that's four nights of evangelistic crusades and a choir praise session that will be happening on the 28th and then the four nights thereafter. And there's so many ministers and uh, uh, so many choirs that are coming. I'm going to ask that you pray, God, for a successful, successful event. And uh, we have so many marvelous speakers who will be supporting at that time. So I just want to ask you, Sister Carlene, to just go ahead and pray for us and pray for what God is going to do through these op opportunities that he's making available to us. Good night, Pastor. Good night to the platform. Father, we give you worship tonight. Lord, we honor your name for who you are. For there is no God like Jehovah. There is none that can be compared to you, O God. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. You are the I am that I am. You are the ancient of things. You are God and you are God all by yourself. All the other gods, they are the work of men. But you are the most high God. Jehovah is your name. Mighty warrior, great in battle. Jehovah is your name. Father, we look to you tonight, mighty God. We come in your presence, O God Almighty. As your words say, Lord God, that our best righteousness is as filthy rags before you. And so, Father, I come tonight, mighty God, ask that you will wash and cleanse us, O God, from all infirmities, O God. Create a clean heart and renew a right spirit. Cast us not away from your presence, O God, but restore unto us the joy of your salvation and of all us with a free spirit. Father, we come in your presence tonight, mighty God, knowing, Lord God, that without you, God, we can do nothing. Without you, mighty God, we are like a ship without a sail. So, Father, we invite your presence tonight, mighty God, to be with us, O God. Lord, just as Moses said when he was going up in the wilderness, that, Lord God, if you are not going with him, then he will not go. So, Father, we invite your presence with us tonight, mighty God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, O God, as we, mighty God, we are having these events, O God, the city of praise. Mighty God, we pray tonight, Lord God, that the Spirit will take control. Because God is not about us, mighty God, but it's all about you, O oh God. It's all about the anointing, O oh God. So we pray, mighty God, of every choir, Lord God, that will minister, O oh God. They will minister under the anointing, O oh God Almighty. That lives will be changed and homes will be rearranged, O oh God. People will be saved, O oh God Almighty, in these choirs of praise. Father, we are calling out unto you tonight, mighty God. Because you said we should call out unto you and you will show us great and mighty things, O God, which we have never seen before. So, Father, we call you up tonight, mighty God, as we are having this city of praise. Mighty God, we pray for every person, O God, that you will take in part. God, we have put, O God, our pastor before you, mighty God, as he's the head, mighty God, leading this charge. We pray even, O Lord God, that you will undergird him, O God, with fresh strength, O God. Pour out the fresh anointing over his life, mighty God, the anointing which come to destroy you and to set the captive free. Father, we pray even now, mighty God, that you will cover him underneath the blood, that you will cover every area of his life underneath the blood. Because God, we know the enemy does not like what he's doing, but in the name of Jesus, we put a stop order against the plans of the enemy tonight, mighty God. We tear down every stronghold that the enemy set up against the servant, mighty God. 
to the real him. God, we mash up the plots and the plan of the enemy. God, we counteract every force tonight that want to rise up against this meeting, oh God, that will be held on the 28th, oh God. We destroy the plans of the enemy tonight. We say, God, arise and let the enemy be scattered, mighty God. As we plead the blood of Jesus Christ on the spot of ground. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon the stage. We plead the blood upon the musicians and technicians. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon every instrument that will be used. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon every person. Mighty God, that will be taking part. Every person that will be ministering, oh God. Every minister, every leader, mighty God. We put them in your hand tonight, God. We say comprehensive blood covering. Mighty God, we pray for your fresh fire. Oh God Almighty, in the spirit, Lord God, on the 28th. Oh God, we pray that it will be a difference, mighty God. Lord God, we pray that people will bow down and worship you, God. Men will come to know that you are God and that you are to be served. Oh God Almighty, take full control, God. Father, remember the nights, oh God Almighty, who says that we will have in. Mighty God, we declare that souls will be saved. God, we declare Spanish tongue for Jesus. We declare Spanish tongue for your mighty God. We declare in the name of Jesus that, Lord God, Spanish tongue will never be the same again. Oh, God, there will be a turnaround. There will be a shift in the atmosphere. Oh, God Almighty, every corner, every lead in a Spanish tongue, mighty God, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ. We assign angels, mighty God, to every corner of Spanish tongue. Lord God, we launch a curfew in a Spanish tongue. Every lead in every household, we launch a Holy Ghost curfew. Father God, we bind the strong man that want to operate, oh God, in a Spanish town. Oh God, as we come, mighty God, to win souls for your kingdom. Lord God, as we follow your command, you tell us to go. Mighty God, we declare souls for you tonight. Souls in the mighty name of Jesus. For those four nights of crusade, every minister, God, every pastor that we, that we preach, oh God, every bishop, we cover them with their blood. We lock them with spiritual wickedness in high places. Rulers of darkness, we counteract them with the blood of Jesus. We cover the entire area. We assign angels, no one has spot of ground. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ and that part. Oh God, we look crusade, we'll be keeping. God, we bind the forces of evil that want to rise up every secret agent. Oh, God, every monetary spirit, we lock them down now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every unclean spirit, God, that want to show up his ugly head, we destroy them now. We burn them with the fire of God. And we say, Jehovah, give up fight for your people. Oh, God, as we wage war against the enemy's war in a Spanish town, we lock down every spiritual wickedness in high places. Every witchcraft working spirit, we destroy them now with the blood of Jesus. Mighty God, every flag that will be raised, we tear them down with the blood of Jesus. We counteract every force tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. We say, God, arise. Arise in a Spanish town, God. Arise over the prison of Almighty God. And let all the enemies be scattered. Mighty God, every secret here that it want to show up them head. Every monetary spirit, God, that will want to come. Oh, God, every agent that gone to conference because they hear of this meeting. We disturb your meeting now. We mash it up now with the blood of Jesus. We counteract the forces of darkness. We mash up every plot and every plan. We burn the chariots of the wicked in the fire. We burn their chariots now. We break the bow. We cut the spear asunder. We say, mighty God, have your way in a Spanish town, God. Cover all the leaders underneath the blood. Cover all the pastors, all the ministers. Oh God, the prayer scheme. Lord God Almighty, the technicians, the musicians, we put them underneath the blood of Jesus. Mighty God, you said when you see the blood, you will pass over. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we cover your people with the blood. We cover the entire Spanish town with the blood. Every lane, every corner, every street, every household, we put them underneath the blood of Jesus. Mighty God, we say strengthen your people, Father. As we go on the battlefield, Lord God, to win the loss at any cost, we pray in the name of Jesus that the Spirit will take dominance, but not by power nor by might, but it is by your Spirit, O oh God. It's not about us, Lord God, but it's all about you, Father. It's all about the kingdom. So, mighty God, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, and let your will be done, Father. As we look to you by faith tonight, mighty God, 
We just want to tell you thanks for the lives that will be changed. We will tell you thanks, oh God, for the homes that will be rearranged. We will tell you thanks, mighty God, for the souls that will be saved, oh God. We will tell you thanks, mighty God, for the night of praise. We will tell you thanks, mighty God. We tell you thanks for the four nights of crusade. We tell you, mighty God, thanks, oh God, for your blessing, for your favor. And Father God, we look to you by faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen oh, and amen and amen. Thank you so much, woman of God. It's a night of praise. And that is so important because God has done so much for us. And when you think about his love, when you think about his goodness, when you think about his grace that has brought us through, then guess what? We've got to pause and we've got to give him some praise. And so this is such an important, important attribute of Christian living. And that's what we're putting on display to the world, that hey world, pause, it's time to give God praise. So at this time, I'm going to invite Sister Maureen to unmute her mic. And as we have all these things that we're planning, you can imagine all the things that it takes to make sure it comes off and comes off well. Sister Maureen, I'm going to ask you to be praying for the leadership of the Lighthouse Ministries, especially the Apostle and the First Lady. You know, a lot of these things fall on his shoulder. So we're going to ask you to just put him before God, put the ministry before God. Go ahead, Bona. Glory to God. Good evening. Most righteous and heavenly Father, we come before you another true the evening. Mighty God, we give the thanks, we give the praise. We lift up your name and I. Your name is great and greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun and even unto the going down. Mighty God, even in the grave you are Lord. And you are Lord of all lords and King of all kings. You are the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Mighty God, you reign supreme. You reign in victory. You reign in power. You reign in glory. Mighty God, you're the author, the finisher of our faith. Oh God, you're a reason for living. You're a source of providing and a shelter in a time of storm. Mighty God, we come this evening and nothing will bring in our hand, oh God, but simply to you we cling this evening. For mighty God, we cannot make it all by ourselves. So mighty God, we depend upon you this evening to see us true, O oh God. So mighty God, we come in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And you said, who can stand before us? When we come in Jesus' name, oh God, we call upon your mighty name this evening. For God, your name is a strong tower and the righteous running and they are saved. Mighty God, we lift up your pastor, oh God, before you this evening. Your son that you have called for such a time as this. Oh God, and you know him by his name. Oh God, you know him before he was born. You know the plan that you have towards him. A plan to prosper him, to see him in good health, and whatever he do, prosper it. Oh God, as you call him, oh God, to feed your sheep in this time, in this season, oh God, you ask him if he love you. Oh God, he answer your call, oh God Almighty, and you send him, oh God Almighty, to go out here, oh God, and to gather your sheep, oh God, to take care of your sheep. God, we know the enemy is mad at him, but God, we are excited, oh God Almighty, the day when he enters Spanish town. But God Almighty, where would we be this evening? Oh God Almighty, we would maybe die. We would all about our own business. But God Almighty, you send him in such a time as this. Oh God, to seek soul, oh God Almighty, to recover the loss, oh God Almighty, of any cause. So mighty God, we know, oh God, he's not wrestling against flesh and blood, but he's wrestling against principality, against powers, against the rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. But God Almighty, this evening we stand in the gap and we cover your son under the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We cover his wife up under the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We cover his children under the blood of Jesus. We cover his grandchildren in the name of Jesus. 
And we said, no weapon that form against him shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against him be condemning judgment. Oh God, you say he's not an undergoer, but he's overcomer by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God, we lock down every force that want to come against your son, that want to come against the leaders, that want to come against the ministers, that want to come against your church. For mighty God, you say, upon this rock you build your church, and the gates of hell shall not, will not and cannot prevail against it. So mighty God, we mash up, we cancel, we pull down, we root up and we throw down and we destroy. Oh God, every Jezebel that want to come against your son, every Ahab spirit, oh God, will lock them down. And mighty God, the altar that Ahab have built for him, oh God, every Ahab shall I'll hang up on their own altar, even their son, O oh God Almighty. Ever Jezebel, the dog shall eat the flesh of her and lick the blood in the street, O oh God Almighty. So we cover the lighthouse family. We cover our mighty God Bishop. We cover our apostle. We cover their dream, their vision. They're going out and they're coming in. We cover them, God, when they go on the street. We cover them, O oh God, in the home. O oh God, we ask an angel with flaming sword to take stand in their womb and run about them in the name of Jesus. Oh God, you said the angel of the Lord and can't petron about them that fear you. And God, we know that he brings fear for you. For God Almighty, even though you're a loving God, you're a God of judgment. So Father, this evening, build an edge around him, oh God, as you build the edge around Job. For God, for the enemy to touch Job. He asks permission, oh God Almighty. And the permission he gets is for you to get the glory, oh God Almighty. So mighty God, I cover your son, oh God Almighty, and he's going out and coming in. In his field and city, God, we cover him with the blood of Jesus. Oh God Almighty, we pray that you give him insight. We pray God that you give him foresight. Oh God, you give him the spirit of discerning, that he will see things from afar. Oh God, he will be in the now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, we come against every plan. We come against every trap. We come against every sneers of the fold and a nice old pestilent, God. We come against every arrow that shoot out of them, God. And we say they must miss in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every terror, every destruction, God, none shall come near him. Neither is dwelling in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God, we pray that you give him iron speed. Oh God Almighty, I pray that you give him strength, that he will soar above the enemy and that his enemy will become his footstool. God, I pray that you'll lead him and you direct him in the plain path. Mighty God, cover him under your wings. Hide him up under your shadow, God. Protect him from every nice of pestilence. Oh, God Almighty, I pray that mighty God, you pull him with a strong right and oh, God Almighty. For you said nothing you hold him to you and no one can take them out. So, God Almighty, this evening, we ask, so oh God, that you be a shield for him and a strong tower from his enemy, God Almighty. And when his heart overwhelmed, Oh God, I pray that you will lead him to the rock this evening. The rock that is higher than I. For mighty God, you said, open this rock, you build your church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So God, let no hell prevail against your man servant. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray that you cover his wife. For God Almighty, we know that she stand behind him in all that he's doing, oh God Almighty. She is the one who will encourage him when he's discouraged, oh God. When he's hopeless, God, she will tell him to open your oh God. For there is hope in God and there is hope in Jesus. So mighty God, this evening, we are depending upon you to see him through God, whatever he do. Wherever he go, God Almighty, we ask for your holy presence. For God Almighty, we are the presence of the Lord is. There is liberty. And in your presence, there is fullness of joy. 
and at your right and their pleasures forevermore, God Almighty. So, mighty God, shielding from the onslaught of the wicked one, them. Oh, God, help him to stand and do all things to stand in this time. Oh, God, favor your son, oh, God, in whatever he do. God, you know that he need help in this time financial. But, God, I pray that you open up the doors, them. That, oh, God, everything will align according to your will and your way, God Almighty. At the end, oh God, there will be no debt to pay God, and he will be debt free in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, mighty God, we are depending upon you this evening to see your son true, oh God, and all those that stand behind him, cover them up under your blood. Keep them in all thy ways, O oh God Almighty. O oh God, remember, mighty God, our oh mother, of this evening. We pray blood coverage over her. We pray protection, O oh God. We pray your strength in your daughter. O oh God, we pray that you lead her, you direct her, mighty God, as she go from strength to strength this evening. So, mighty God, we look to you by faith. Have thine own way, God, for you are the master of our life, and we depend upon you. So we give you thanks, we give you praise, and we ask these only in Jesus' name. And we said, Amen and Amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Glory to God in the highest peace and goodwill to all men. That's what the angel said, and that's what I'm feeling tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ladies, for praying us through as we transitioned in glory meeting and before moving over into Bible study. Just a couple of reminders and just a couple by way of announcements. Just want to welcome everybody. For those of you who came on late, thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to glory meeting and Bible study. I'm your host, Pastor Dr. Karen Powell. And on behalf of Apostle Rowan Edwards, and First Lady Pastor Dr. Janet Edwards of the Lighthouse Ministries, as well as our very own Bishop Dr. Lily Tomlinson. I just want to welcome each and every single one who has joined us this evening. Remember, every morning from Monday to Saturday, you can join us in the morning for glory, glory, glory. The half has never been told. So in the mornings, we start at 5 a.m., right up until 5.30, there is worship. There's precedence in this. When you look at the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Right there, that's a praise. Holy is your name. You're giving God some thanks. You're giving him some praise. And so when Jesus was teaching us to pray, he says, the first thing you do is give thanks. And so we want to start off each morning with praise and thanksgiving and worship. And that's what we want to do with praise in the city. We want to give some thanksgiving and praise. And then after praise and worship, we go into the reading of the word. That's from 5.30 until 6. The word is read. So you're getting ready for work. You're preparing yourself to go out for a busy day. The word of God, which is what we stand on. It's the foundation of all we think all our structures, all our hopes, all our dreams, the word of God is that solid foundation. And that's where you get that word. If you're not able to read in the night, if you find that when you start reading, you fall asleep, don't worry about it. Come on in the mornings, 5.30 to 6, the word is read. And then from 6 until 7, oh my God, what an amazing time we have in the presence of God. There is prayer, there is worship, there is testimony. And then there is a word. And that word is something that gives you enough to keep you for the day. You know, when we remember just a few weeks ago, we looked at the, 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 the 10 virgins and we said five were five wise and five were foolish. What we recognized about the wise virgins was that they refilled their oil in the lamp. And that's because they had a reserve. Guess what? We give you that reserve every single morning. Yes, we do. You come and you tap into that gas station pump and you just put in your, your, your allow the pump to, attendant to put the nozzle into the car and fill you up. Well, that's what it is. This program is the nozzle that fills you up in the morning so that you can be ready for that day. And so we just encourage you to join us, share the link. When you go on, if you can't remember every morning, it's easy. Just click the notification button. 
once you click that notification bell, it tells you when we are on. It goes bing, 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 bing. You're live and ready to go. And so you know what's happening and you can join us and be a part of this great family of God. We are from all over. We have persons from England. We have persons from the U.S., persons from Canada, persons right here in Jamaica and all over the world. Once my sister went to Switzerland and we were right there. Someone was watching us. She introduced them to the program and they're still on. So we are all over the world and we just come to give God some praise on the platform. We're praying. We're praying for all sorts of things. We're praying for our nation. We're praying for the peace of Jerusalem because the scripture tells us that if there's no peace in Jerusalem, there's no peace in the world. So you want world peace? You want to see things improve across the world? Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we pray for you individually. We pray for a healing. We pray for deliverance. We pray for breakthrough. So if you need any of this or you just want some peace in your heart, I, I, I have some friends who say, listen, I can't sleep at night. I say, come on in, because I know this program can make a difference and allow your life to never be the same in Jesus' name. So do come on and see what God has to do. And then on Wednesday, all roads lead, you know where, yep, to the train station, right in the heart of the city of Spanish Town. It's where all the transportation needs in the old days, that's where everybody would come. The trains would come in from all over and people would go on these trains and they would take their journeys all over. Today, it is the city, it, it's a center city where all the buses and the, and the taxis come, but it's also where God shows up. Are you in need of God in a special, miraculous way? Well, do come to Spanish Town. Just ask anybody, where's the train station? They will send you to the Lighthouse Ministries right there. And if you can't be there in person, do join us electronically. We are on Facebook. We are on YouTube. And I know God has a word to bless. So join us tomorrow for that. All right. At this point, we transition directly into Bible study. And so I'm going to invite you to join me in bowing our heads as we ask God and seek the face of God to just give us some guidance and some leading as we go into the word for tonight. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, for there's none like unto you. Lord, as we come this evening, Lord, we come with our cups turned up. Lord, pour out, dish out, bless us. Thank you, God, for what you have done and what you continue to do in this space. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So tonight, our topic is changing of the guards. <laughs> now, whenever I picture this whole idea of changing of the guards, I, I think of a procession that happens outside the palace in England. And so what happens is that you have the guards who are stationed at that doorway of the palace that nobody can enter in. And they, they, they actually stand in this rigid pose and uh, persons from all over the world go there to take their photos. But at a particular time of the day and another time in the evening, there is what is known as the changing of the guards. And what you find is that another set of guards come out and they're fresh and they're ready. And they do this impeccable march in synchronization. And they go and they salute the ones who were there. And then they leave and they take this position. And it's a beautiful thing to watch. I've never seen it in person. I'm hoping to get to do that soon. But from what I see, it's beautiful. But there was also a changing of the guards in the Bible. And that's what I want to look at tonight. Because coming up to last week, we were looking at the whole matter of the Easter story. We were remembering what Jesus did on the cross for us. We remembered what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane. We remembered what happened on the cross itself. We remembered what happened at the tomb. We spoke about it and it resonated with us all the things he did so that we could have life and life more of it eternally. You know, he says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And so we got that blessing. But he had to go back to his father. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you and I'll receive you unto myself that where I am, he may be also. 
So he tells us that I've got to go back. So he died. He was resurrected, but he couldn't spend all the time with us. He couldn't stay here on earth. He had to go and stand at the father's right hand so he could be the mediator between us and that. And so as he stands there, he said, but I'm not leaving you alone. And that's how we move to the changing of the guards. I want to turn in your Bibles to the book of Jeremiah. We're going all over this evening, so I do hope you have your pens and the papers ready. And we're going to the book of Jeremiah chapter 31. Now, if you're in the New Testament, you are in the wrong place. <laughs> Jeremiah is actually an Old Testament book. And if you are wrong by Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, no, you are still wrong. It's closer towards the end of the New Testament. So you have all the prophets together at that point, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel. So go down towards that back part and you'll find Jeremiah. And we're going to chapter 31 and we're just reading two verses there. Verse 34 and 35. Hear what the prophet put pen to paper under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he says, and I'm going to be interjecting some words just to make it a little clearer. He says, afterwards, I'll make this covenant. Now, a covenant is an agreement, right? We've talked this before. So he says, afterwards, I'm going to make this agreement with the people from Israel. Hear what he says it's going to be. My law will be in their hearts and in their minds. Now, I want to pause there because why it's important that we, we're, that Jeremiah 31, verse 33 right now, why that is important is up to this point, all we have known about the law is that it was written on tablets of stone, remember? Remember that Moses went up into the mountain and God gave him the law and it was written on these tablets of stone. And when the Ark of the Covenant was built, they placed these tablets in it. But God is now saying, hey, there's coming a time when this covenant agreement that I'm going to make, it's not going to be like the old covenant. It's going to be a new covenant agreement. It's going to be a new thing. And this new thing, it's not going to be written on tablets of stone anymore. It's going to be written in the hearts and in their minds. That means the people who it's written in, they're going to know God's laws. And they will love God's laws. And he says, I will teach them my law. I will be their God and they will be my people. Nobody will have to teach his neighbor anything. Nobody will have to say to his brother, know you God, do this. No. Everybody will know me whether they're important or not, whether they were a priest um, in, the, in the church or not. Everybody will know God. Everybody will know the law for themselves. And he will forgive our sins and he will not remember it. So let, let's read Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 34. And I'm reading from the King James Version and it says, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their people and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them until the greatest of them, say the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sins no more. Now, this is an important um, passage of scripture because remember what happened in the Garden of Eden was that sin separated God from man. And based on the actions of Adam, we were also given a covenant, a, a promise, an agreement which says the wages of sin is death. And God being a just God can't just forget our sins. There has to be a price paid for the sins because Adam was told, if you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. God has to honor his word. He can't go back on his word. He's not man that he should lie. So he has to do what is just and what is right. So when the prophet put pen to paper, he obviously was not speaking about an Old Testament covenant. He obviously was not speaking about a time before Jesus because before Jesus, there is just law and sin must be remembered. So this here is a prophetic utterance. 
it, it, it's a promise of something to come. The prophet was looking down the lens of time and he was picking up something in his spirit that, hey, man, there's a season that's coming that's going to blow our minds. We're not going to be dependent on the commandments anymore. Instead, God is going to write his law in us. We're not going to have to bind his words upon our foreheads and upon our, our, upon our, our, our doorposts anymore because it's going to be in us. In fact, if you go to Ezekiel chapter 36, which is right after Jeremiah, so you're not going very far. Just spin over if you're in the Bible with me. Go to Ezekiel chapter 36 and we're going to verse 26 and 27. Hear what it says. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put in you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. And hear the key verse now. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. So God is saying, listen, there is coming a time when I am going to rewrite the story. He's saying, I'm going to rewrite the story in such a way that that which existed before is no longer going to be how it exists today. He's saying, listen, before on the law, you were under bondage and you were bound to die in your sin. But there's coming a time when you, your hearts are so cold. That's why he had to give the law. He says, because your hearts are so cold, because you, you're so angry, because you're so bitter, because you're so full of sin, I've got to give you rules to walk, how to live, what to do, how to forgive your brother, how to forgive your sister. God says, I have to do all of that. But he says, when my spirit is placed in you, then guess what? Nobody will have to tell you how to live anymore. Nobody will have to tell you about your clothing and your dress and whether you're out of order, out of alignment. Nobody will have to talk to you about these things because I'm going to be in you. And when I'm in you, I'll tell you how to do all things. We're talking tonight about the changing of the guards. And so Jesus, while he was here on earth, he was going around and he was teaching. We know this because we, we saw him on, on, on the mountain. You remember in the book of Matthew, he's on the mountain and he's preaching and he's teaching. And every opportunity he gets, he gathers the people. Remember, there was a 3,000, there was a 5,000. He, he, he went to um, different places and he was always sharing the word. Remember, that's how he found Zacchaeus in a tree because he went into the city to preach. He went into the temple and so he was always teaching and he was always preaching. But as I said earlier, there comes a time when he had to leave to become the mediator as promised in scripture by the father's right hand. He has to stand for us. His blood was shed, covers our sins, allows for the changing of the God. So when he dies and he's leaving, he says, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send you the comforter. And he speaks about the comforter a lot. In, and, and, and John, in writing the book of St. John, actually gives us quite a bit of that information. So if we were to go to John chapter 14, yeah, around about chapter 14, you'll see him teaching the disciples and promising them the Holy Spirit. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, that's where you find it. New Testament, and you're looking at the Gospel of John, and you're going to the 14th chapter, and let's go down to about verse 16. Yes, and here he says, he is talking, this is Jesus is talking, it's not John's imagination, it's not John pulling from the, the, the scriptures previously, Jesus is talking, and John is recording what Jesus is saying, and Jesus says, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another. So there was one, was replaced with another. And this another is the comforter that he may abide with you forever. Hear what he continues and says in verse 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but he know him, for he dwelleth with you 
and shall be in you. So Jesus is talking about what we just read in Jeremiah 31 and what we just read in Ezekiel 36 saying, when I leave, the fulfillment of what was promised is going to come. And in John 14, 26, he says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. That's why when, when the prophet wrote and said, look, there's coming a time when the law will be in us and will speak to us. That's what the prophet was seeing, that the Holy Spirit is going to teach us all things and bring all things to your remembrance. So as you read in the scripture, so when we come here in the morning and from 5.30 to 6, we hear the scripture, the Holy Spirit who resides in us is going to bring it back as we go throughout the day and we're in need of information. So you're going through a rough time at work and you, you need something. The Holy Spirit reminds you, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And as this is reminder comes into you, it gives you a level of peace and comfort that passes all understanding. So Jesus is saying to them, in the changing of the guard, I am not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send you someone and he is the Holy Spirit and he is also the spirit of truth and he's also the comfort. And he's going to do quite a number of things. If you now move over to John chapter 16, and we're looking at verse 8. John chapter 16, verse 8. And when he's come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have met, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them. How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you in all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Now, this is important because what the Holy Spirit is doing is he's teaching us about sin and goodness and judgment. And so while the disciples would have been arrested and while people would come and say bad things about them, while people are going to say bad things about you, while people are going to say things about you that don't even gossip, <laughs> as we say in Jamaica, guess what? The Holy Spirit will keep us in all his ways. He will calm us. He will, he will give us a, a level of peace that passes all these troubles and anxiety. Hear what he says in John, St. John 16, verse 33. These things are spoken to, unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, and but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. This is Jesus speaking to the Bible. Now, when he dies, which we spoke about the Easter, that, that was what all of the Easter celebrations was about. The question that I asked was, what next? What, what, what happens next? And one of the things that, you know, the Lord dropped into my spirit is to, to remind the people that, there is a this changing of the guard that he's not left us alone. Because a lot of times the story seems to end with him ascending in the clouds in glory, right? So we talked about what he did for us. We talk about the cross story. We, we talk about the resurrection. We talk about the, the fact that upon the resurrection, he takes away the key of death and hell and the grave. And now we are empowered. But how are we empowered? Because we saw where the disciples saw him rising in the air. So how does that empowerment occur? Well, the first thing is that he says to them, don't leave Jerusalem, go into the upper room and wait. So they did just that. They went to the upper room and they waited. And the fulfillment of the first promise came of the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit descended upon them in the room in the form of fire 
and they were speaking in tongues and they were just glorifying God who is in heaven. Now, the amazing thing is, it didn't just happen for those 120 persons in the upper room. In fact, it was the first gift of it, but it's a gift that keeps on giving. It's like, it's like, you know, they say in your DNA, you can trace your DNA all the way back through generations and know about the persons before you. Just last week, I was watching this documentary about this woman in Africa. And when they, tra they traced her DNA, they said they were able to trace her back to the oldest living fossil that they have ever discovered that that woman had the same DNA strand as that fossil that they had discovered that was over two, 3,000 years old. Hmm. Interesting. DNA passes from generation to generation. You know, like people say, boy, you all look alike. Once you're a poet, every poet will look alike. Once you're a brown, every brown look alike. I don't know about that. But it, it's there's this thing in your DNA that, that holds you and, and makes you like everybody, similarly like everybody before. And guess what? That's the same thing with the spirit. The DNA of the Holy Spirit transcends name, it transcends gender, it transcends um, race and ethnicity. It, the Holy Spirit, it, once you decide that you are marrying him, once you decide that you're, you're the, bridegroom, the bride of the bridegroom and, and you marry him, the DNA is transmitted in us. And, and suddenly we too get what the Holy Spirit gave to those who were in the upper room during this changing of the guard. So let's, let's slow it down a little. Jesus, we said, promised the gift of the Holy Spirit. John 14, 16, I'll ask the Father and he will send you another helper. He'll send you the comforter. That's what we said. And we also said that there's a promise of this power that the Holy Spirit is going to give us, which will be used for witnessing. We saw this in Acts 1, 8, we said, where we saw the Holy Spirit come upon them, just as Jesus told them, because he said, you're going to receive power when he comes, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria. Now, what was important about this was Jerusalem is a home ground of the Israelites, but Judea and Samaria are the outskirts. As a matter of fact, Samaria is a no man's land where Israelites are concerned. If you think about it, remember Samaria is the land of the Samaritans. Remember the Samaritans and the Jews don't mix. Remember the Samaritans were originally Jews, but during the splitting of the nation, when they were divided, when, when Israel broke into two parts, 10 nations became Samaria. The, 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 the capital was Samaria and two remained Israel. That's 12 tribes splitting two, 10 became Samaria, basically, and two became Israel. And their deeds in Samaria were so dirty, so bad. They started worshiping false gods. They got so bad that the Israelites, the remaining two tribes, have absolutely nothing to do with them. Because they said, how can you turn away from a God that you know? We came through the Red Sea. You know the stories. How can you turn away so badly? And that's why the Samaritans and the Jews don't mix. The Samaritans believe that, um, you know, Jerusalem is not the capital, Samaria is the capital and vice versa. So they, they don't. But here's Jesus telling them, look here, when the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you're going to be so empowered. You're going to speak of me, not only in Jerusalem, but you're going to take me to the uttermost parts of the world. You're going to become bearers of the good news. So we said that it was fulfilled. We saw it when the day of Pentecost occurs in Acts chapter 2. We say that, that, that we see the tongues of cloven fire upon them. And why we know something happened was that after the empowerment came, after they were filled, then Peter, yeah, the same Peter who just a few months ago, was it a few months or a few days? Well, let, let's backtrack. Jesus died. He was resurrected. He stayed 40 days on earth. So that's a month and roughly 10 days. And then he says, I'm leaving. He leaves. He tells them to assemble in the upper room, stay in Jerusalem. So it may be maybe two months, 40 days. Uh, 40 days is like a month and a week. Yeah. And so 
40 days ago, he denies Jesus because of fear. 40 days ago, he went back to fishing. 40 days ago, he, when they said, aren't you one of those who walked with Jesus? He was like, no. In fact, I personally believe that he cursed. That, that, that's what the word that, that speaks about that um, scenario, that Greek word, it said he cursed. He cursed. He, it's almost like he was swearing. It would be almost like a Jamaican bad word, if you know what I mean. And on me, I mean, I know the man. 40 days later, after being empowered, by the Holy Spirit, he steps outside in front of nations of people. Now, remember, Peter is not John. He is not the 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 the, 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 um, the one who is able to talk. He is not the the writer. He is not the the eloquent one. Peter is just a a, a fisherman. Peter is a rough, you know how we know Peter is rough? When they came to arrest Jesus, he takes the sword, uh, the, the sword from the soldier and cuts off the soldier's own ear. Peter is a rougher man. He is a ruffian, according to proper colloquial words. He is a ruffian, you know, uncouth. But when the Holy Spirit empowers him and he goes outside and he starts talking to nations in front of him, it says, we're not drunk as you suppose. And he starts teaching. The Bible tells us that those who received his words were baptized. Not that they were responsive to the word, not that they just came close. Of those who came close and received what he says as truth. So obviously there were thousands there. But those who received the truth and said, we want to be baptized, there were 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayers. And the Holy Spirit enabled the disciples to proclaim the gospel with power, and they saw a great harvest of souls. With the changing of the guard, what Jesus did was to prepare their hearts that, that's what we get when somebody preaches the word to us. When, when, when a pastor shares a word and we bow our knees before God and we cry out at the altar or we yield and we surrender, our hearts are prepared. We get, remember the Bible talk about, he says he's going to remove those stony hearts and replace it with a heart of flesh. That's what we get. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we get hearts of flesh. And then we get the Holy Spirit who comes in on us. And when he comes in on us, he empowers us. And when he empowers us, we do things that we can't do. <laughs> I like that. We do things that we can't do because of ourselves, we could not do it. When I come on this program and, and I speak of myself, I can't do it because I don't like crowds. I'm an introvert. I, I like to lock up in my room and, and just read my Bible. That's what I love. I, I love being in my space. But when the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, suddenly you can do things that are outside your comfort zone. And you do it without even thinking about it because it's not you. You are the vessel being used by the Holy Spirit. So Peter, the ruffian, suddenly becomes Peter, the evangelist. I'm not sure if Billy Graham ever preached one message that 3,000 people got saved one time. I don't know. Maybe he did. But Peter did that. You know what else happened? When you have the Holy Spirit in this changing of the guard, he not only comes to live on the inside of you, he not only makes you more eloquent than you were before, but he suddenly empowers you with courage. And that's what happened with Peter because Peter was a coward, as I mentioned before. But by Acts chapter 5, we see when the Peter and the disciples are, you know, being told you were not supposed to preach in this name. Then Peter says, look here, we must obey God rather than men. You murdered Jesus when you killed him on the cross. Hey, these are fighting words, you know. 
but God gave him life again. Now God has given him a place of honor. Jesus is prince and savior, and he can help this nation based on the wrong things you have done. If only you decide to serve God, he will forgive you. This is Peter talking. This is Peter who is no longer the coward, but this is Peter, the man who will say, kill me if you must. But I have to tell you the truth because I must obey God rather than obeying men. This is the holy boldness that we get when we go on the side of the road. I remember when Bishop would come into the community and I would hear them down the bottom of the road. I wasn't yet a Christian. My mother was. And they would be, Bishop would be strumming the guitar. Back then, you know, he wasn't Bishop. He wasn't Apostle. He was Pastor Eddie. <laughs> and he'd be there strumming the guitar. And Sister Eddie would be knocking the tambourine. And the kids would be playing the keyboard and the drum. And they'll be singing. I'm inviting you all to come along. We're having a glorious time. We're going to the city. Better. And they're loud because they turn up the box really loud. And I'm like, oh, my God, these people are so noisy. <laughs> I don't want to, I, I believe church, you go into church and you must, you know, sit and you, you, you finish your service and you come back out. I don't want to go with these nice and nice people. And my mother, she's right. They're making up noise with them. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. Fast forward a year later, I get saved. And when I get saved, guess what happened? I'm right there on the roadside singing and clapping my hand. To this day, I'm singing and clapping and I don't care where I am. I don't care. I don't care whether I'm in the prison over or I'm on the roadside. I've even been in my job and somebody comes in and people have come up to me in my job and they've said, you know, I'm going through this. Can you pray for me? I, I don't know. Uh, you know, they, they seem to know who I am. Uh, they seem to know that there is someone in me and they'll come and they'll, they don't know me from Adams per se, but they'll come and they'll say, can you pray with me? Can you pray for me? I'm going through this situation. Can you help? And I will pray. I pray because at the end of the day, he has emboldened me. I'm no longer, I'm no longer seeing them as a noisy, noisy church. I'm seeing them as a church of God. I am the first one to, you know, when I'm in church or not, because I'm the loudest one and I don't have a beautiful voice. I make a joyful noise. We're talking about the changing of the God. And with Jesus' resurrection, he sends us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes to continue the ministry of Christ. That's what Jesus told us in John 12, John 14, 12, when he says, truly, truly, I say, whoever believes me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these shall he do because I'm going to the Father. The Holy Spirit is empowering us to carry on the work of Christ. He's empowering us to not be afraid. To live is die. To live, to live is great, but to die is gain. The other thing that the Holy Spirit does is that he gives us truth. That's what we read in, in, in John 16, 13. He gives us truth. He gives us illumination. He gives us understanding of the scripture. And I know a few months back, we did a study on the Holy Spirit right here on this program. I don't know why the Holy Spirit or why God would say to me, go back to this, the changing of the guards. I don't know who needs to hear this word, but if it needs to be said, I will say it. You need to have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you so that you can be guided, that the decisions you make will not be your own. He is divine. He's divine. It, to turn with me in, in the book of Hebrew. Hebrews, let's go to Hebrews chapter 9. And if you are closer to um, Gen uh, Genesis, Exodus, wrong section altogether. You're supposed to be in the New Testament. And it's a little bit closer to um, Revelation than it is to Matthew Mark. So we're at Hebrews chapter 9, and we're looking at verse 14. Hear what it says. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? The Holy Spirit is eternal. He is omniscient. 
1 Corinthians 2.10 tells us. Uh, he's omnipresent. Psalm 139, 7 and 8 tells us he is omnipotent. Luke 1, 35 tells us as a third part of the Trinity, he does the divine work in us of redemption and sanctification. That's a person. He, he has intellect. He teaches, he guides, he stands on our behalf. He's not just this force, you know, this power you know, this dunamis, he is a person. The Trinity is three persons in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And somebody says, how can they be three but in one? Well, I'm glad you asked the question. Picture an egg. There's the eggshell. You break that shell, there's the egg white, and you cut that white if it's boiled, and you get the egg yolk. It's one egg, but it's all three in one. Correct? Yes. And likewise, each part of the triune Godhead has their role. And the role of the Holy Spirit is to live in us and to guide us in all his ways. What he does is to teach us about holiness. So we can't use the law to teach us about holiness. No, 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 no. He living in us will teach us about holiness, about purity, and about righteousness. So uh, let's put it this way. You can read the commandments all you want, but if you find yourself being drawn into uh, a sexual sin, for example, no other reason than it's the one that everybody thinks of. That's why I draw for it. So you're, you're drawn towards a sexual sin, adultery, fornication, whatever. You can read the commandments. You can read the commandments. You can read the commandments. Nothing may happen. But let me tell you this, if the Holy Spirit live in you and you're drawn into something, he sees something is coming, you're around the wrong person, you're going into a situation that could lead, then you hear him saying, don't do it. Don't go there. He will wake you up out of sleep and say, look here, this is wrong. He, he will give you a dream if necessary and say, mm -mm, wrong person, don't get caught in this. He is so amazing in your life. And he's in your life and he's my life. And that's why I mentioned about his omnipotence and his omnipresence, because he's everywhere and he can live in all of us all at the same time and guide all of us. And it doesn't matter how many of us are here on planet Earth. He can do it. And he's not only a revealer of truth. He is not only illuminating us. He's not only encouraging us. But he's the one who produces fruit in our lives. Think about it. He is the fertilizer that makes the truths of our life come alive and bear fruit. So you come into Christ. Think of it as being I don't know how many persons are gardeners, but you can transplant a tree. So you can dig up a tree from one place and plant it somewhere else. So we are dug up out of sin and shame and iniquity, and we're transplanted into the soil of God. So we, we set down roots and we're connecting to God. Now the Holy Spirit, he is the fertilizer. He comes around our roots and he says, okay, I'm going to pump some things in. And when he starts pumping these things into you and we're connecting and our roots are getting deeper and the tree is getting healthier and we're getting bigger, then guess what? A healthy tree produces fruit. And what type of fruits are we producing? We're producing love. We're producing joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. In Galatians 5, 22, 23, all these things are happening in us because the Holy Spirit is making his way in us. Now, I see that I'm totally out of time, but I have to close off with this. He dwells in us. He empowers us. He guides us. He fertilizes us. And he prays, intercedes on our behalf according to the will of God for our lives. And that's really the scripture that I really want to focus on and leave you with tonight. I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8, 
And that's right after the book of Acts, Romans chapter 8. And we're looking at verses 26 and 27. Hear what it says. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Our infirmities are sicknesses, right? Our, our things. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. I want to go a little further. Let, let's pick up 28 as well. And we know that all things work it together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Now, we, we love to take that line of scripture and we love to talk about it. But notice the things that came, that came before. Because what came before is all things work it together for good to them that love the God, Lord and those who have the Holy Spirit in them. So when you hear somebody who's not a Christian quoting that scripture, I love you, but sorry, love, it ain't yours. It's not legal. You're holding on to something that's not legally yours. This scripture clearly states that the reason why we are able to decree and declare that all things work together for our good is because the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us, helping us on the outside. He is showing us, he's interceding on our behalf with groanings that cannot be uttered. So sometimes when we hear the babbling of tongues, the Bible tells us about that too, that the Holy Spirit, you know, the babbling of tongues, what happens is that we think we know what we need, but the Holy Spirit knows that's not what we need. But because we are so trying to say what we need, the Holy Spirit sometimes I've got to take over and start saying, okay, let me pray for this girl. Because if she gets what she wants, she is a royal mess. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, some persons will pray and say, Lord, give me that guy, that's the guy, or give me that girl, that's the girl that I want. And the Holy Spirit is saying, back up. If you go there, you are going to be destroyed. You're going to be beaten, girl. Don't go there. So while you're there trying to pray, suddenly you hear, and the Holy Spirit is saying, Lord, keep away from me. All negative personalities, keep away from me, every destructive spirit. Keep away from me, everybody who would come into my space and destroy me. Keep away from me, everybody who is not good for me. But you are on the outside thinking that the Holy Spirit is saying, give me, give me, give me. No, the Lord confused you because if you knew what you were praying, you would have stopped praying. <laughs> we got to close off here. I, 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 I'm just feeling so blessed. I'm feeling so blessed. Because this gift that we have been given, according to his riches in glory, that, that's what he says, in, according to his riches in glory. So, it, you know, if he's rich, He's only going to give us the best. And the best that he's given us is himself. He gives of himself. He gives his best. And that shows you the type of God we have. First, he gave of himself. He gave his son to die on the cross. And then he gave the Holy Spirit to leave the triune Godhead and to come and live in us. He keeps giving and giving and giving. He's the giving God. I just am amazed at what he will do for us and do in us and do through us. So, changing of the guard. Jesus left. What next? So we're continuing that message, not last week's message, but the week before. The changing of the guard. That's what came next. And now we have the Holy Spirit who lives in us, binding us together with cords that cannot be broken. He creates that unity and that fellowship among us. That's what 1 Corinthians 12, 12 and 13 tells us. Galatians 5, 22, 23. It tells us that we bear each other's burden because the Holy Spirit is living in us and guiding our steps and our thoughts. Thus fulfilling what was promised in Jeremiah 31 and what was promised in Ezekiel 36, that he's going to give us a new heart. He's going to put his spirit in us. He's going to take away hearts of stone, give us hearts of flesh. And so now when we are at that position, that placing his law he himself will teach us 
his law, he will live inside of us. And we don't need people to teach us about the law, but he will teach us instead. And everyone will know him. It does not matter our status in life. It does not matter which community you came from. It does not matter where you were born. It does not matter how your language sounds, whether you're broken English or proper English. He says, I will be with you. Well, I certainly went overboard tonight, 15 minutes overboard. I apologize, but I just felt compelled in my spirit that I had to share this word. I do hope something from it resonated with you. I do hope that something encourages you. I hope that if you have not asked the Holy Spirit to live in your life, that you do that today. Because some of us have been baptized, but we've not asked the Holy Spirit to live on our inside. And it's an invitation. He has taken away the stony heart. He's given us hearts of flesh, but he is a gentleman. He's not going to force himself anywhere where he is not invited. So you've been wondering why, you know, you're not getting the breakthroughs that you thought you should have gotten by now. You're wondering why you keep following this cycle. You know, some of us are in some cycles and we're falling back into sin, falling back into sin, falling back into sin. Why? It's because we have not invited the Holy Spirit in to live on the inside. So, yeah, yeah and, and, and you know, sometimes we talk about these cycles. People always think about sexual sins. It's not just sexual sins. It's not just the, the, the thing to steal. It's not just that. It's sometimes some very bad habits that we have. Sometimes it's not taking care of ourselves. We're the temple, you know, we are God's temple. We need to take care of this body. Sometimes it, it, it's how we treat others. Sometimes it's how we talk about others. Sometimes it's how we, 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 we speak to each other. It's the Holy Spirit living on the, it's how we describe each other. It's how we hate each other. Can you imagine? You're in the house of God and there are people you can't stand. And I hate that one. And she better not talk to me and he better not come over here. Because the Holy Spirit is not living on the inside. I've heard stories about people saying, this is my seat. And nobody, nothing is sitting in my seat. And I'm like, but the seat is our hearts. And God needs to sit on our hearts. And that's the only seat we need to, to care about. And when you hear these stories, and these are stories not only here in Jamaica, so don't think it's a Jamaican thing. This, this, these are stories that you hear overseas. Today, somebody shocked me, knocked me off my seat. My mouth literally fell open and she had to physically say to me, Karen, close your mouth, because she showed me and this is not one of those false news items. You know, you have false news items. But she showed me a bishop of a church, a well-known church, who is married to another man. And both of them co-pastor the church. And this is not a, this is not a, a false news because I actually went on his page and it's right there. The wedding was there. And I'm holding my head and I'm crying, oh God. God. Why am I crying out? Because we say we're heroes of the word and doers of the word, but we manipulate the word to fit the standards we want because our hearts are still so stony we're not allowing our hearts to become hearts of flesh because if our hearts were hearts of flesh then the holy spirit residing in us could correct our behavior patterns and say to us this is out of alignment but instead we dance and we glorify the standards of the world now, this doesn't shock us. Why? Because the Bible tells us in the last days, men will be lovers of themselves. The Bible tells us in the last days, these are the things that will happen. And that's where we're going next week. We're talking last days next week. I do hope you enjoyed me. I thank you for staying with me. I know I've gone over time, but you all stuck around and stayed with me. Thank you for keeping me company as we study to show ourselves approved. Workmen rightly dividing the word of truth. On behalf of Apostle Dr. Rowan Edwards, Pastor Dr. Janet Edwards, Bishop Dr. Lily Tomlinson, and all the leadership team of the Lighthouse Ministries, I want to say thank you for joining us on Glory Meeting and Bible Study. 
Just a reminder, we're here every morning, five to seven, live on Zoom and on Facebook and YouTube. And you can send in your prayer request and I know that you'll be blessed. We are also tomorrow going straight into train station where we are going with our cups turned up because we're coming out with a cup of refreshing miracles. You, you, you ever need a refreshing? You ever hot? And then you stand up under the shower and you get dosed and you say, yeah, well, that's what we're going. We're going for a daily dose or a weekly dose <laughs> at the train station. And if you can't be there live, join us on Facebook and YouTube where the program is brought live. Until next week, same time, same place. Thank you for joining us on Glory Meeting and Bible Study. God bless you all. You may open your mics and say your goodbyes. And a reminder, Praise in the City, April 28th. We're going to have the choirs, the praise songs going up to Zion. We're glorifying God. And I can tell you, God will show up and show up. And then following that, we go into four nights of evangelistical crusades right there at the prison oval. Starting Monday the 29th up until Thursday, May 2nd, we start at 7 p.m. nightly and we're going to have an amazing cast of speakers, including our very own apostle, our very own Dr. Lily Tomlinson and other strong, powerful men and women of God who are Bible believing. Let me say that nowadays I'm going to have to start emphasizing that, that we are Bible believing people of God. God bless you all. Love you lots. Bye. 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 Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.